My name's Steve Jones and I'm the director of CLEEPS. Um, CLEEPS is a non-profit making organisation that provides guidance on how to do safe and effective practical work in science and design and technology. CLEEPS provides a whole range of services to support the teaching of science and technology in schools. Uh, these services fundamentally include safety advice in the form of model risk assessment that can be adapted by teachers and technicians to make sure that what they're doing is safe and in line with current best practice. In addition to this, we also provide advice on practical activities, uh, ones that we've tried and tested and that will actually work in the classroom. The responsibility for safety in school science is effectively everybody's. Fundamentally in law, the employer is ultimately responsible, but the teachers and the technicians and in fact everybody involved in the delivery of the curriculum has a part to play in keeping the practice safe. A growth in the focus on STEM subjects in schools has resulted in an increase in demand for CLEEP services and we have noticed this through increased calls to the helpline and through a greater number of downloads from the website. Some of this is to do with more em emphasis on those subject areas but it would be fair to say that this has also been due to a reduction in the number of technician hours but also in the number of non-specialist teachers teaching outside their comfort zone and we've noticed in the type of inquiries that we get that we are increasingly having to support people who are less qualified than they perhaps were in the past to deliver the practical aspects of these curriculum subjects. At the moment we think the biggest challenge is facing practical science in schools is a shortage of specialist staff and this applies to both teachers and to technicians. Many schools are responding to current budget challenges by reducing the level of their support staff and this obviously includes technicians in science and technology. At CLEEPS we believe this is a short-sighted response because we see the employment of suitably qualified and experienced technicians as absolutely vital in times of economic necessity. I would like to encourage school senior leadership teams to view their technical support staff as a key part of delivering delivering good value for money in those curriculum areas. The biggest impact we've seen in, caused by the cuts to funding in schools has been the reduction in technician hours. And we can see that reduction in technician hours feeding through into the safety aspects because the technicians frequently act as the gatekeeper for safe practice in practical science and technology. The most common aspect that we hear about through the helplines in terms of safety in science relates to ventilation and inadequately or not ventilated at all prep rooms and chemical stores give rise to a long string of inquiries to the helpline. It's an interesting area because the impact of poor ventilation is very much upon health rather than safety and our concern is for the long-term health of the technicians and teachers who are working in premises that are inadequately ventilated. Being slightly tongue-in-cheek, if I was asked to give three tips to make science safer, I would say belong to CLEEPS, make sure you actually use the advice that you've got from CLEEPS, and if you're unsure about anything, please contact the CLEEPS helpline. Now, being slightly more serious, uh, making certain that safety advice is adhered to and followed through by all staff is probably absolutely key. Lots of schools have access to lots of very good advice from various sources, including ourselves. The problem is that that is frequently underused. We definitely feel that science teachers and technicians in school are now under increased pressure. This is partly due to the effects of reduced funding, which we've mentioned earlier, but it also reflects the move towards a greater emphasis in practical work in GCSE and A-level sciences. The combination of these two things creates a challenging situation in science departments.
The interest recently in the storage and disposal of the chemical 2,4-DMP in schools has taught schools and ourselves a number of useful lessons. I think there are probably two key points to distill from that. The first one is the importance of proper stock taking. And that's a task usually carried out by technicians and therefore it's important that the technicians have the time to do this. This is frequently something carried out during holiday periods when the technicians are not directly supporting class practical work. Schools should therefore make certain that their technicians actually have the time and the expertise to maintain up to date records of the stock held. The second thing is the importance of prompt disposal. It's extremely important that if chemicals are no longer being used, are no longer needed, or are currently being held in quantities that are more than is necessary, schools should take prompt action to arrange for those chemicals to be disposed of. Too often, schools will stockpile out-of-date, unused, no longer needed chemicals because of the cost of having them disposed of. So moving on from the 2,4-DMP scenario, we have produced two documents, one for science and one for design and technology, that highlight what we've called the top 10 areas of concern in those departments. And this is based on what we found when we go out and do audits in science and technology departments. Um, you can get those two documents off the website, downloadable. Uh, the science one is called GL238 and the technology one is called GL239. Schools that hold radioactive sources in order to teach the curriculum need to recognise that in their case they are a radiation employer and the law requires them to appoint a radiation protection advisor from which to get advice. The law also requires that that person should have level 4 or above qualifications in radiological protection. This service can be accessed in a number of ways. CLEEPS provides a mechanism for doing so, but schools could also go directly to a radiation protection advisor. Regular staff training is an important part to play in terms of maintaining safety in science and in design and technology. Um, we all have a tendency to become complacent over time and we forget the good practice that we learned earlier on in our careers. And at Cleeps we find that there are two groups of staff who are most at risk from having an accident or an incident. And they are the new staff who quite reasonably don't know what they don't know. But interestingly they are the most experienced staff who are the ones who have forgotten the good practice that they once knew. I had an opportunity to give a message directly to principals and senior staff in schools about the importance of science safety. Um, there would be two aspects to it. The first one would be slightly tongue-in-cheek to say actually this is probably the only thing uh, that as the employer's representative you could go to prison for. Um, not often seen in that way in schools. But the second thing would be a more reassuring message which is to say that this is not actually difficult to do. You do not have to be an expert in all the technical areas of this in order to do the job properly. You basically need to know where the advice is and to make sure that key staff in your school are making effective use of it.